Hello everyone and welcome back to round 14 of our F1 manager McLaren career mode. Yes, we're back ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. We've got to go through the summer break, everything like that, but we're back once again, of course. If you missed out the videos that went live over the last couple of days, of course, we have the Singapore GP from the Hass Road to Glory that went live yesterday. And far more importantly than that, we did, of course, have the championship finale between myself and George Russell in our F122 My Team career mode. We'd highly recommend going back and checking those videos. Videos out. But yesterday we returned though to Spa Francorchamps, the Belgian Grand Prix. Of course, we, we, the Hungarian GP in this series last time out was very, very dramatic as well. Of course, Ferrari they, they did Ferrari things as as you would come to expect uh, on F1 managers. So yeah, would recommend. It was probably one of the most bizarre races I've done on F1 managers so far. But as we head to Belgium though this weekend, fingers crossed. You know we've got a very, very big championship battle going on. One point clear of Alpine, five points clear of. Alfa Romeo as we head into the second half of the season. Drivers Championship wise, Lando Norris in P10 there, one point clear of Oscar Piastri as well. Of course, we're a little way behind Bottas, Alonso and Gasly, uh, that are all absolutely carrying their teams so far in this championship. But, you know, we're doing good progress. You know, we're, we're bringing more upgrades to the car each and every week. I need to be doing more of that as we head into this weekend as well there. But I am tempted to see if we can try and bring in some new um, technical chief and head of aerodynamics as well, there you can see currently only 75 rated. Um, so I think I think we're going to do a bit of shopping and see who we can try to find. Right, so I've been doing a few upgrades, various little bits and pieces around the place, and we've actually scouted out one uh, new potential uh, head of aerodynamics and one potential technical chief. We, we might be bringing some Ferrari personnel back together uh, over at McLaren. So I'm going to try and propose a contract then uh, to Diego Tondi. Um, we haven't actually got that much money at the moment. We've only got $6 million left in the bank, so we're going to need to try... And, you know, really balance this out. Um, some of you guys have often told me as well how I'm meant to do this on F1 Manager. And to be completely honest, off the top of my head, I have forgotten. So we're, we're going to offer him quite a lot of money and hope that he accepts it. There, two-year deal, $2 million salary with a $280,000 signing on bonus. Will that be enough to bring Diego Tondi over? No, no it won't. So we're going to have to try again. I'm going to have to up the money even more up towards $3 million. Uh, 2.6 mil seems fair enough. Um, that He's going to get paid if he accepts it. No, that is still not enough. Um, but we're going to have to go all out here. Oh, <laughs> no, I spent too much time and now Diego Tondi isn't interested anymore. I was about to offer him four seasons on... Five million dollars there uh, with a half million dollar signing on bonus, but he's not interested. Uh, he's got no patience and not interested there of joining us, so we, we might have to look for someone else a bit further down the line. Uh, head of aerodynamics, though, like I said, we have actually also uh, been scouting out uh, Simone de Resta, of course, who used to be over at um, Ferrari as well. And, of course, they went to Haas a couple of years ago, so you know, maybe, maybe he'll want to be sort of bumped up the order. Of Oh, here we go. First time round. Uh, Simone Resta has agreed to a deal there. So we're going to hire him on for $1.4 million. Um, I don't know whether down the line then we might be able to try and go back for Diego Tondi again. Uh, he is the highest rated uh, head of aerodynamics, I'm pretty certain, on F122. We could try and get Eric Balbo away from Red Bull, perhaps? Um, do, do, I drop, do I just offer him every penny we've basically got left within this organisation uh, and see if he accepts it there? We're going to try it, see if it works. 4 million, eh, we might go 4.2 mil, uh, 4.3 mil there, and we'll offer him pretty much, like I said, every last penny we've got as a signing on bonus as well. Nope. Er Enrico Balbo, sorry, is not interested just yet, though. So, Mitchell, Mitchell, I don't know why I can't pronounce names suddenly. You're staying with the team a little bit longer as we try and earn some money in the second half of the year. But just be warned, you're on thin ice at the moment. So, we have now got Simone Resta there as our new technical chief. But I think, yeah, we've just got to get on with it, try and get in towards the Belgian Grand Prix. And, yeah, really start, you know, try and kick off for the second half of the year. Mean how we aim to go on. Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome to Spa-Francorchamps. This circuit was built in 1921, and even though its length was halved in 1979, the Belgian Grand Prix is still one of the longest, fastest, and most magical races on the F1 calendar. Spa-Francorchamps is famous for its long straights and fast corners. 
drag efficiency will make all the difference here as drivers zoom through the famous sequence of Eau Rouge leading up into Radion. But a twisty middle sector keeps things tricky down on the track. The season is about halfway through and it makes me wonder what else is in store for the team. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's get this underway. I must admit, playing this and just having a quick look at those opening cinematics, I'm getting really, really excited to go back to the Belgian Grand Prix this summer there. But looks like we've got changeable conditions Friday, Saturday. Sunday is meant to be clear skies, though. Um, so, you know, practice uh, data might be quite limited. But, you know, we'll see what we can always do here on F1 Manager. You know, we, we were roughly getting there. We know sort of how we're setting up the car uh, more often than not nowadays. So, fingers crossed, we can try and work things out quickly. I remember actually back in the Ferrari series we did on F1 Manager, they actually managed to bring in uh, Bono, didn't we, off of Mercedes there, which was always quite weird seeing him in a red Ferrari suit. But, you know, we're, we're going to try and start poaching from other teams as we get in towards Season 2. You know, a lot of that, to be honest, is about making sure um, that we're, you know, as much helping ourselves as we are trying to nerf other teams. You know, we do we aim to be in the fight in season two or at least throughout some of the series um we'll wait and see of course what really does happen because of course you never really know on f1 manager but yeah that's that's kind of the game plan at the moment um but we've still got a lot of races to go with season one of this series we need to try and save up some money as well uh, and hope yeah that we can finish p4 overall get ourselves that big prize pool uh to offer its hand as well perez been nipped down at turn 18 apparently is he right behind us or is that max for stappen uh, that's definitely turn one there and Ahead. What's he done? It, it, it's not even telling me what he's done. Uh, Gasly's crashed at turn 18 as well. Uh, no one's been it, apparently. I, I don't know what this game's doing. Quickly as well, you know, I do like to give some shout-outs when there are some different drivers down at other teams. There, Jay Anderuvela uh, is in the Alpine car this weekend, which is very, very interesting to see. They didn't think he was ever an Alpine junior driver, but it is what it is. Uh, and he's, he's just gone quicker than both of our cars as well, which is not so reassuring. Get, get him back out, Alpine. Well, Lando Norris... Rather unsurprisingly, not happy with the car. Uh, so we'll bring him straight in and have a look what's going on then. Of course, you know, we, we do get some more precision, some more feedback from the drivers, which is always quite nice uh, as the session goes on. But yeah, it's, it's just the way Lando likes to word things. He, he just moans a lot, basically, on F1 Manager. But yeah, we'll, we'll try that. I mean, everything was not feeling particularly good. So fingers crossed we're, we're getting closer. And Oscar Piastri saying basically the same thing. So luckily we'll box him in as well there. Uh, able to give us feedback actually very, very early on though. Don't often get feedback inside the first 25, uh, 20 minutes, but we'll take it. Well, there we go then. Just under 20 minutes left on the clock. Oscar Piastri now feeling pretty comfortable with the car. Of course, still trying to get used to some of the upgrades uh, that we've been able to bring this weekend. New side pods on both of the cars as well, uh, which has been desperately needed. Lando Norris there. Um, he's actually starting to struggle a bit on the engine side of things, so I might have to put another engine uh, into the pool this weekend. Of course, you know, we, we know Spa, Monza in a couple of weeks' time are both very, very power-sensitive circuits, so always like to give the drivers a good chance around these venues. Well, a little over 10 minutes left then here of FP1. I'm quite surprised, to be honest, that the rain has actually stayed away throughout the entirety of this session. But both drivers now feeling pretty decent uh, with the cars they've got underneath them. Of course, we're expecting it to be quite a, uh, quite a wet Saturday uh, here from Spa. And then, you know, should dry it ready for Grand Prix Sunday. Um, but, yeah, we're doing what we're doing. You know, we're, again, never does it look like we've got particularly good pace in free practice. I don't quite know how Pierre Gasly uh, is still six seconds off the pace. I'm guessing he did actually crash the car. Uh, and the game just didn't want to show me. Um, but yeah, I think we're basically there. Unless anything else crazy happens, we should be ready to just move on into qualifying, I suppose. No! 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 What on earth has happened? Lando Norris has been absolutely sent to the Shadow Realm down at Turn 1 there. He's got... Oh, it's Albon behind him. Former GP2 rival. Albon locks up and he's just sent him. Straight off down at Turn 1. I don't know if Lando has been able to limp the thing back. No, he's out of free practice here. So that is going to put us on the back foot. The team are going to have a long night trying to get that thing repaired. As that is terminal gearbox damage as well. He's completely destroyed Lando Norris's gearbox. As we just watch the replay again there. Of course, backs into that wall. So I'm not surprised uh, that the gearbox has taken a big whack. So Lando Norris then might have even more grip penalties ready for this GP. And only a minute left. And free practice as well. That has all gone catastrophically wrong. 
Well, let's have a look then. How bad is the damage there? You can see a gearbox, a new gearbox, basically, completely gone, ready for this weekend. So we're going to have to put a fresh one into Lando Norris's car. I think he also did some big damage to the engine as well uh, in the process there. Yep, that engine's basically been wrecked as well. I hope Williams are going to be paying us back for all this. And then the ERS as well. Uh, has really taken a beating. So we're going to have to pay a million dollars for a new one of those as well. Oh, this is a disaster. This is an absolute disaster. Ready for the Grand Prix here. I mean, he did also damage the chassis. Um, so he's... Uh, looks like we've still got one of those. Um, no, we, we can't even put one of those on. He's had to go back to car... No, he, he seems all right there. So I think we're going to have to emergency manufacture... Are one of those as well, uh, just to make sure that both cars can be on the better one. Um, but, oh, that's been an absolute disaster. I do need to actually put that chassis on Oscar Piastri's car as well, I suppose. Right, well, Lando Norris then will have some grid penalties ready for the weekend here, but Charles Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, uh, as well as Mick Schumacher, and of course Alex Albon there, uh, will also serve some penalties. Uh, yeah, I feel that's a bit unfair, of course, that we've been absolutely rear-ended uh, by another car. It's wrecked us. And we're the one that's got to pay the brunt of it and pay a million dollars out uh, to get some new parts ready for the car. Um, so, yeah, Lando Norris then with a 10 place grid penalty. So, if he starts anywhere above last, uh, that'll probably be quite a win for us. Uh, tempted, honestly, actually, now I think about it, uh, just to try and bring even more components there. So, we've got them in the pool. Uh, so we'll go with, yeah, we'll, we'll, we may as well bring him right to the rear uh, of the field this weekend. And now, of course, it means that, uh, you know, if he comes to it later on in the season, we can give him some fresh power unit components as well. But we're spending a lot of money on this, but we just need to try and get the cars as high up the order as we can here on Saturday. This might be Oscar Piastri's chance to prove himself. Heading, though, into Q1. Looks like we shouldn't see any particular chance of rain. Um, so, yeah, we, we there's no track water in Q1, so we don't need to worry about that all too much. It's just whether we're going to get some rain uh, later on in the session. Like I said, I don't really want to put much focus on uh, Q1s anymore. Uh, you know, we, we should, should be making out of them pretty easily nowadays. No. No. No, someone's binned it. Who's binned it late on in the session? Yellow flag, Sebastian Vettel stacked it at turn one. Oh, literally, as I was just saying about how we often haven't had to worry about trying to make it out of Q1 here. Sebastian Vettel, a huge lockup in towards the first corner. Lando Norris has not had a clean lap in. He got held up behind Alex Albon on his run. Will they get that Aston Martin shifted before we head through those final couple of turns then? Ready to start our final lap here of Q1. Let's wait and see. Uh, Lando, well, I mean, Oscar Piastri is just on the cusp at the moment, so both cars do really need to improve there, try and bump Mick Schumacher uh, down into the drop zone. Yes, yellow flags have gone, but will Lando Norris start his final lap? Only just will Lando Norris get onto a lap there. We had a couple of seconds left on the clock. Now he has got to make it count. Right, well, other cars coming towards the end of their runs, though. Alex Albon won't improve. Lance Stroll won't improve there. And, I mean, it is dangerous for Williams and Aston Martin. The fact they're over a second behind any other re representative time uh, in qualifying here. Max Verstappen goes fastest, quicker than Charles Leclerc. Carlos Sainz, championship leader in P3. Russell almost a second away there in fifth place as the top four covered by just two tenths of a second there. Hamilton can't improve on P7 there. Gasly will go quicker than the Brit here in Q1. Oscar Piastri though is improving with Fernando Alonso in eighth place there. Ocon and Sonoda just inside the top ten. Lance Stroll stays in 18th. We won't see Sebastian Vettel improve as we head up in towards the final couple of corners. Oscar Piastri out of the final turn up towards the start finish line. Will he improve? No he does not there. Stays P15. So it will only be one of our cars that makes it through into Q2 then. Again, another low down four circuit. This just doesn't suit this McLaren as Lando Norris across the line goes into P10 there. And Oscar Piastri out in Q1 when it's Lando Norris with all the grid penalties. When am I going to catch a break in this series? This is just a disaster at the moment. We should have told Lando to abort the lap there and seen if Oscar uh, could have gone quicker in Q2. But Lando Norris is through, I suppose. Um, but he's basically going to be starting from the back anyway. Well, heading out then into Q2, looks like we are going to see a very, very slippery Belgian Grand Prix circuit now. The rain has arrived, and how are we looking in comparison to sort of water levels there? It is meant to stay pretty level uh, throughout most of the session. 
Um, but yeah, he's just going to rain throughout then. So Lando Norris, he's really got to try and get a lap nailed here. Maybe, just maybe, of course, because the track, you know, he's going to require a bit more downforce. This can play into our hands a bit. In towards the final couple of corners. So it's been a fairly clean, tidy lap. Got held up by George Russell slightly. And I think that's uh, Pierre Gasly heading out of the final corner. Just getting in the way of Lando Norris as well. Up towards the start finish line. Lando Norris goes just two tenths of a second behind Fernando Alonso. That is a very, very good representative early on. A look at this. Lando Norris though heading back in towards the pit lane here. Four mil of water now on the circuit. So this is giving Hamilton, Alonso and I a bit of a lifeline early on in the session. Everyone else now is going to be desperate to try and get times on the board. And if this rain doesn't abate very quickly, which it probably won't, we might just have made it into Q3 there and similar style to how we did back in Albert Park. Well, two minutes left then on the clock. Too late for us to go out for another run here. But you can still see almost four mil of standing water at the moment there. It doesn't look like there's going to be any big surprises. Sonoda, both Haas and both Alfa Romeos out in Q2 isn't actually that shocking here. Um, but yeah, that has helped us go through into Q3 then, which does give us, like I said, a bit of a helping hand. Um, but still, still not ideal. Well, there we go then. For us, at least, a very undramatic end to Q2 there. Hamilton fast is ahead of Alonso and ourselves, quicker than Charles Leclerc. Verstappen, though, unable to make it through. So Mick Schumacher improved late on in the session there to bump Verstappen out. In Q2 there, Sainz just sneaks by by the slimmest of margins over the Dutchman. But Max Verstappen then down the order once again. Didn't really stop him last weekend at the Hungaro ring. But where can we try and put this thing? Are we going to see more changeable weather? I think everyone is under the same impression early on in the session. The rain has gone away a bit, but it is meant to be rolling back into the circuit very, very quickly here. So we're going to have to be monitoring this. It's just into intermediate conditions here. Uh, you know, he could have gambled it, tried to go out on a set of drives and hope that it sort of balances, up, goes up and down quite a lot. But Lando Norris then first lap here in Q3. He's got to try and make it count because uh, if this rain doesn't go away, which it looks like it won't, this might be a really, really important lap there to try and boost himself up the order even more. It might be a really good opportunity for Alonso and Ocon to get a good qualifying time in because one of their cars, or I think it might be Alonso, uh, leads the way down the end of the Kennel Straight. Oh no, in towards the final couple of corners has it been a great lap by Lando Norris. They're under pressure uh, from Esteban Ocon, but the rain is getting heavier and heavier, so we might still have a bit of an opportunity to get the jump on a few other cars there. Sainz goes fastest ahead of Perez there. Lando Norris up towards the line will only go P4, as I think Ocon uh, unable to go quick there. And Alonso, he wasn't first in the queue, he just was heading out onto his lap. So Fernando Alonso then is just trying to start his lap now then here at Spa. And luckily for us, everyone did go intermediates, but surely no one's going to be able to improve unless it really tails off towards the end of the session. What? There is still a bit of rain on the circuit, but we're going to send Lando Norris out for one last ditch attempt here just to try and cover off from any other cars that improve behind us. As there we go, there is now, a, according to this, there's, there's zero track temperature whatsoever. I, I, I don't know how that works, but the rain has now stopped here in Belgium, so hopefully we're going to see the times get quicker and quicker towards the end there. We were these penultimate cards to get out onto a run. Could this be a battle between ourselves and Fernando Alonso there? The Spaniard is down in P10 at the moment. We're currently on the second row of the grid in P4. I would absolutely take this at the end of qualifying. Of course, I'm well aware, you know, we have got grid penalties still as one of the Mercs appears to have done something. George Russell's going around with no front wing. Hamilton, uh, I think, has just had a bit of an oopsie as well. Just running wide there at turn seven. So it is all kicking off in the Belgian Grand Prix qualifying session here. It's one of those classic spa sessions at the moment as Lando Norris unable to improve in Q1. Will he find time around the rest of the lap? I think it might just be a bit too damp still. It's in towards the final couple of corners though for Lando Norris. I don't think he's going to improve here. So it was, yeah, I mean, we had to cover off just in case, but don't think it's going to make any difference there. At the final corner, up over the line, he doesn't improve. Stays P4 though. Will Alonso be able to improve? Yes, he does there. Alonso goes just 17 thousandths away. But that is P4 on the grid, ready for the uh, Belgian Grand Prix. Before grid penalties, that might be one of our best qualifying sessions of the year. I think that was better than we managed at Albert Park all those races ago. But like I said, both cars are going to be starting though towards the back of the field, ready for the Grand Prix. Let's do this thing. Welcome to race day. And before we get down to it, last minute checks are being made. Qualifying went well for McLaren and they're set to start this race feeling quite comfortable. We saw a reasonable push from Mercedes in qualifying, 
and they'll have plenty of opportunities here to achieve a great result. And the race will be taking place under blue skies. That means the teams should be able to apply their strategies without any added complications. Well, this may well be another Belgian Grand Prix for the ages. So stick around and find out how it all ends. Right, well, here we are then looking towards the Belgian Grand Prix. Sunny Sunday here from spa francorchamps champs is exactly what we want to see there. But, yeah, Lando Norris, uh, we need to have a quick look in a moment where the, both our cars are starting from. Uh, we're going to try, actually, and go... We're going to go with the alternate strategy with Lando Norris this weekend. I don't know why. I've just got a feeling that it might be the way to go there. You know, cover off in case we get a safety car, something like that. But sunny skies, I forgot to set it. Uh, Lando actually starting from P11, though, which I guess is actually a rather good thing uh, for our second, uh, sorry, yeah, technically our second driver, but we all know, uh, really, of course, he is the number one uh, within the organisation there. Create strategy D. Why it doesn't just auto save, I will never understand there. But we're going to try and cover off uh, in case we get any safety cars. I mean, we. Yeah, no, we, we won't we won't overfuel uh, Oscar Piastri's car. We will underfuel Lando Norris, though slightly. It did work uh, quite nicely for us last weekend. But let's do this thing then. Belgian Grand Prix time. Spa Francorchamps. We need to try and get another run and try to keep outscoring Alpine and Alfa Romeo. The championship fight is going to be very, very tough towards the end of this campaign. It's bright and sunny as the drivers line up on the grid. And there's Lando Norris. They're starting in the bottom half of the grid today, so there's a lot of cars between them and the podium. And it's the other McLaren. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. The teams are ready to go. You can hear the excitement in the crowd here at the Belgian Grand Prix. It's lights out, and away we go. Well, there we go. Hope we can try and get a good, clean start with both cars. They're, of course, starting on the outside for the infamous La Source. Let's wait and see. Someone else has locked up, apparently. Oh, no! What on earth has gone on? They've got a virtual safety car immediately. Someone's been bit somewhere. What on earth has happened? Multiple cars have crashed there. I don't think either of our drivers have lost their front wing. What on earth happened? Down at Tom I couldn't see what it was or who it was. Kevin Magnussen apparently then locks up. Oh, so he collides with the Alfa Romeo with Zhou Guan Yu on the inside there. And that completely ruins the second half of the field down at that first corner. So Zhou Guan Yu's going to have to take a new front wing. Kevin Magnussen as well might have picked up a little bit of damage in the process. Now, I don't think we really need to change anything for either of our cars. Though. We'll just put everything, of course, back into conserve. Um, but not the ideal start then for anyone in this Grand Prix. Immediately, it's given the top half of the field a big, big gap there. You see Zhou Guan Yu with a bit of front wing damage. Uh, Kevin Magnussen as well. Has he picked up any front wing damage? I think, yeah, they both nicked one half of the front wing. Uh, so whether they're going to pit or not is a different question. But Charles Leclerc as well starting way down the order. That has not done him any favours as Sainz leads the way ahead of Perez and Ocon. Esteban Ocon is in P3. Right, virtual safety car is coming to an end then as we come towards the end of lap one. Lando Norris then down into... That Lance Stroll definitely did just crash into us there, but somehow we've got away with it as I almost had a heart attack going through the final corner. But that's going to promote Lando into P10 then. Oscar Piastri are all over the back of Sir Lance as well, heading back down in towards Turn 1. But, yeah, I mean, this is going to become very, very interesting early on in this Grand Prix. It looks like, actually, saying that, though, uh, the top half of the field and the rear half have bunched back up a little bit. Uh, but Lando Norris is going to have to push on. Oscar Piastri needs to apply some pressure to Sir Lance as well there as they head up a Rouge and Radion. If we go overtake mode... Might be able to try and work. No, nope, that's the wrong car. That will not help me with uh, Oscar there. Uh, we'll, we'll just try and get land. Uh, sorry, we'll try and get Oscar past him next lap when I select the correct car. I've got to admit, that camera angle on the inside of Blanchemont is absolutely useless 
on F122, but Charles Leclerc already trying to have a look for a move on our second driver there as they head through the final couple of turns. Let's see what tyres everyone's on. Most cars actually on the soft compound tyres here, so they're all going to try and go uh, not too far into the Grand Prix. So this could really work out potentially for us uh, later on in the afternoon, but Oscar Piastri has got to try and find a way around Lance Stroll here early on as we head back down in towards Eau Rouge and Rally on there. He's under increasing pressure from Charles Leclerc, but of course they will both have the DRS there as they wind their way up through there. Of course, you go up so many stories as you head up through Eau Rouge. Of course, seeing it in real life, it is absolutely mind-boggling, but are we going to be able to get the run on Lan uh, Lance Stroll there? Of course, the Aston Martin, you know just how quick that thing can be down the straights. As here goes Charlie Boy uh, to the outside of us. And again, no one will gain, no one will lose. No, Charles Leclerc is going to really try and get the elbows out in through the next couple of corners there. We're going to have to bring uh, Oscar onto full deploy as we head down the hill. Try and see if we can wiggle away around Stroll somewhere on this circuit, but we've just got to try and go for it now, I suppose. Getting out of Stavolo, though, are we now going to be able to get a run up in towards the final corner? Stroll seems to really be doing just about enough at the moment there. It's to the outside, in towards Blanchemont. No, oh, Oscar Piastri there. you got to be a bit braver, mate. you got to try and go for it on the Canadian there as we ride on board through. Are we going to be able to go for a dive in towards the final corner here? Charles Leclerc still waiting in the wings. Of course, we've got to remember that both these cars we're battling with are on the softer compounded tyres, so they won't be able to go as far into the GP, but it is allowing Lando Norris to try and close back up uh, to the front runners. Here we're going to have to monitor, of course, how much fuel he's able to save uh, throughout the entirety of the afternoon, but surely this time round, surely this time round, uh, Oscar Piastri there might be able to go for a run on Lance Stroll. I don't have to keep commentating this as we head back down in towards Eau Rouge. Here goes Oscar Piastri to the inside of the Canadian there, all over the curbing. Up the Eau Rouge and Rally on there. They keep it clean and tidy side by side there. Charles Leclerc is going to try and get involved as well. Is he going to try and make it three wide as we head up the Camel Street? Surely Oscar Piastri has done enough there and Charles Leclerc might be able to basically push him along and round the outside of the Canadian there. And there we go. Lance Stroll loses two places in one go. We can afford to tone it back then on Oscar Piastri. Charles Leclerc, of course, he will get past. I'm not really too worried about defending from him this afternoon. But we get past the Aston Martin. That is quite critical early on in this race. As I've just noticed, Fernando Alonso way down the order. But Ocon still able to defend from those Mercedes. Yuki Tsunoda, bit of a mistake there. It's promoted Lando Norris into P9 of this Grand Prix. And oh, Tsunoda just goes exploring there at the top of the hill. Clearly trying to do the old version of Spa, and that will give Lando Norris P9 then, as now Oscar Piastri might be able to apply a bit more pressure to the young Japanese driver as we come to start lap 7 of this GP. Like I said, though, Charles Leclerc all over the back of Lando Norris. Uh, hard tyres versus a quick car on soft, so I'm really not too worried. Charles Leclerc will make the move happen uh, probably quite soon there. It might even be back down in towards Turn 1, as long as our driver doesn't get rear-ended again by another car in towards that first braking zone. It's going to happen. I'm really not too worried. Got a big crash. Oh, who's that? I think that might be a couple of the front runners. Esteban Ocon! Ocon's been there, and now we've got a safety car in this Grand Prix. Do we pit? There's just some end plates somewhere around the circuit. Right, Oscar Piastri, you're boxing. You are going to box onto the half compound tyres to see you through to the end of the Grand Prix. Lando Norris, we can't really afford to do anything with uh, just yet there, but Ocon and Verstappen out of the Grand Prix, so I'm not too sure what's gone on between them. So all the front runners then, between here and the Hungara ring, having a big, big incident. What on earth is going on with F1 manager at the moment? I'm still not going to get a look at what Verstappen and Ocon's happened between them, but it's going to promote Lando Norris into P7 then. Charles Leclerc into the pit lane. Let's see. It's still not showing me. Come on, show me what's going on there. Two cars out of the Grand Prix, and it just won't let me see what it is, but... Yeah, there we go. Oscar Piastri then. We might just be able to stretch to the end of the Grand Prix. Of course, this again is a big opportunity to try and save some fuel and everything else. Um, but it is still going to be a very, very long afternoon. Here we go then. About to go green flag racing once more here from Spa. I expect it to be coming in right now by the looks of it because everyone else is weaving around the circuit as Carlos Sainz will lead the way then ahead of Hamilton and Sergio Perez. There's some cars have pit, others haven't. Perez is trying to go to the end. Russell's trying to go to the end as well as Gasly and Piastri there. As Charles Leclerc as well. This has given him a big opportunity uh, to get back into the fray. But I cannot believe it wouldn't even show me what happened between Verstappen and Lance Stroll there. But Lando Norris into P5 then of this GP. All over the back of Valtteri Bottas. I think we've just got to try and get him to push 
off this restart. They're full deploy, everything like that. The Sites will lead the way then, but the big question is, will Perez be able to go to the chequered flag this afternoon? Of course, Lando Norris is definitely going to have to pit once more uh, before the end of this race. Is already now, uh, we're getting warnings of low fuel, but we're only, we're only 11 laps in. And we've already had an absolute pile-up at Turn 1 there. And a big two-car shunt as well down at the final corner. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the McLaren again this weekend. Just a high, a low downfall circuit really just does not suit us still. Uh, so we have to be quite careful. There is Alonso now trying to apply some pressure to Oscar Piastri as well. We'll see if we can try and keep up with Mick Schumacher. As, of course, yeah, Mick Schumacher hasn't pit yet. So three cars between us and the points that we don't need to worry about particularly. Right, well, DRS re-enabled then, starting lap 14 of this GP, and Bottas now won't have, it looks like, the range close enough to Lewis Hamilton in front of him. There, of course, his former teammate, so are we now going to be able to try and turn it up with Lando Norris then and potentially move into P4 of the Belgian Grand Prix there, setting the overtake mode on. Let's see if we can try and get a run up through a Rouge and Rally on there. He is going to be a bit closer to the Flying Finn, gaining, 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 on the Alfa Romeo there as we head down the Camel Street, but look just how little we're gaining on the Alfa Romeo there. We just have way too much downforce on the car as Lando will think about it, but thinks better of it there as we've still got Russell and Gasly behind us. Well, here goes Lando Norris potentially again trying to look past Valtteri Bottas in this Grand Prix. We've got more yellow flags out. Someone else is locked up. I think that's Lance Stroll who's made a bit of a mistake there down at Turn 1, as Oscar Piastri still trying to apply some pressure to the Williams in front of him. Both our cars locked into battle at the moment. Surely we can try and get a run on Alex Albon in the Williams there. No ERS, sorry, no DRS even to defend himself. There, of course, already collided with one of our cars this weekend, and Oscar Piastri won't go for it. Come on, mate, you've got to send it sometimes. Oh, Bottas is boxed. We're up into P4 then of the Grand Prix. We're probably going to lose the place to George Russell quite soon, but Piastri now as well. Still trying to find a way around Alex Albon in this Grand Prix. Again, we'll get him on full attack mode. There is round the outside up through a roof. Surely not. Oscar Piastri, an absolutely audacious move there to get around the outside of the Williams. He's going to have the DRS as well, which is going to make things even easier. And Oscar Piastri threw them back into the points in this Grand Prix. Of course, he is trying to go to the end of this GP there. And a fantastic job done by the young Australian. And we're through. Next up, Sebastian Vettel and Mick Schumacher. Still should be another couple of cars that we can definitely jump. Here we go. Sainz and Hamilton then into the pits at the end of lap 19. So Perez will inherit the lead of the Grand Prix there. But we're all over the back of Sebastian Vettel there. Lando Norris is losing a couple of places. Uh, he's lost one to George Russell there. And I don't think it'll be long uh, before Gasly and Charles Leclerc try and move past. As that was very, very close into turn one but i'm guessing all these other cars are trying to go to the end of the grand prix so we're definitely yeah i don't know uh we just don't quite have the pace there to match you know the likes of pierre gasly uh, in this gp unless their tires really fall off or they have to make another stop uh oscar piastri as well of course got to be very very careful as he does like to burn through his tires uh but now he's into a bit of no man's land he can just sort of sit down focus and get on with his own thing it is still just trying to manage lando norris who's up into the podium places this is what we love to see as we come to start lap 25 then of this GP, Pierre Gasly, it must be said, is doing a fantastic job keeping those Ferrari cars at bay for us. He cannot seem to find a way around Lando Norris at the moment, as we have still got to really think about trying to save more fuel in the second half of this GP. But Lando, we're probably going to box him in around lap 28 there, just to a 16 lap blast on the mediums towards the chequered flag. Um, but yeah, we are going to have to start trying to save some fuel rather aggressively in the second half of this GP. He's probably going to re-emerge sort of around the gaggle of cars, Bottas, Magnussen and co. Um, but of course, should be very, very quick towards the end. Again, depending on how much he's having a fuel save here. But this is what keeps happening with Gasly behind. Gets very, very close there, but just doesn't seem to really look for a move, which is a bit odd. But I'm not going to moan. Oh, so there we go. Looks like Lando has lost the place to Gasly then. So we are going to box him at the end of this one onto that set of the medium compound tyres. We're just going to bring him down onto the conserve as well. Uh, really, I should just be letting those Ferrari cars by because, of course, we don't want Gasly uh, scoring good points in this GP, but more lift and coast required then. Where is Lando Norris going to re-emerge in this Grand Prix? That is the question, of course. Spa isn't the most lot, isn't sort of the longest pit lane uh, in the world there, so, you know, he shouldn't lose out too much time. He will definitely be behind Oscar Piastri, uh, who is, you know, just sat pretty at the moment in P8 doing his own thing. Zhou Guan Yu isn't really taking any time out of him at the moment, so he's, yeah, you've got four second gap as Lando Norris then into the pit lane at the end of that lap, of course, should hopefully save a little bit of fuel as well uh, as he goes through the pits. But yeah, I could really do a being out ahead of those Alfa Romeos, but I'm not expecting that 
uh, to quite be the case there. I've just got to hope for a nice, clean, tidy pit stop, which we will get. That's what we like to see. Oscar Piastri files back through. Up into seventh place he goes. You can see Lando Norris, though, uh, heading out of the pit lane. He might be ahead of the Alfa Romeo Zhou Guan Yu, or at least he's going to be very close to him on pit exit there, as Lando Norris will come back out in P8 there. So seventh and eighth, then, in this Grand Prix at the moment. will be a fine effort and a fine haul of points. Let's just get him pushing for a little bit, try and build up a gap away from Zhou Guan Yu. Um, but, of course, yeah, we have got to save that fuel. As we get close then in towards the final th uh, final quarter sorry, of this Grand Prix, unfortunately, there's been a bit of a switch behind us. Bottas now has got the jump on Zhou Guan Yu, and I'm sure we'll be able to gain time on us uh, late on in the GP. There, Oscar Piastri is going to be quite tight on the tyres, as I'm going to tell him, don't fight your teammate, just let Lando Norris by uh, if he's quicker at the moment. Um, but let's go for it. Let's try and work together there. Os uh, sorry, yeah, Oscar Piastri, we've just got to try and drag you along a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to get him on the deploy as well. Shunt. Big shunt somewhere. It's cars behind us, though. I think it's the Hasses. Mick Schumacher and Kevin Magnussen have binned it. The Hass cars have come together here at Spa. It's not sure. I mean, we've got a box Oscar. I think he's just wrecked too much on his tyres. But Lando Norris has definitely got to stay out to the chequered flag here. What on earth has gone on between the Haas cars then? Down at Oru... Uh, sorry, Oru at the bus stop even. Sorry, I should say Mick Schumacher a long, long way behind his teammate. But a catastrophic brake failure. And that is both Haas out of the GP there. They weren't really in much points contention. Um, but team gutted with that one. And understandably, they're both of their cars out of the GP there. And four retirements then. In the Belgian Grand Prix up to now. Oscar Piastri is going to have to dive in, like I said. Go on to a set of soft compound tyres here. And really motor his way back through the roster. As he just has taken a bit too much out of this set. Uh, but this does also give Lando Norris a big opportunity. To save back a lot more of that fuel than he needed to. Gasly down to P5. Could we still jump Pierre by the end of this thing? Every other car in front of us has boxed in this GP. But Lando Norris still on a fairly tidy set of tyres there. Um, looks like Bottas as well has peeled in behind us, so it might have been worth pitting uh, with Lando Norris. There, Gasly now. What tyres is he going to be on? He's on a fresh set of softs. Only Hamilton and Sainz haven't pit under the safety car in front of us, so it is all going to get a little bit unpredictable uh, towards the end of this GP. But Piastri then should be ahead of Bottas still, so he can really try and defend from him. As Alonso has been nowhere all afternoon, is suddenly up into P8. What?! I'm sorry. Oscar Piastri's just driven through the wall. <laughs> I love F1 Manager. It's so bizarre. All right, safety car in at the end of this lap. I mean, we're still trying to save some fuel with Lando Norris at the moment, but he's just going to have to get on with it. He's 0.4 kilos under, so it's not a huge amount late on in the day, but we're going to have to try and manage both of our cars there. I think we've just got to let Oscar Piastri buy to see if he can try and get the jump on Pierre Gasly off this restart but we've got to be so so careful uh, that we don't do anything too stupid with this we've still got a few more cars trying to close in of course if anything else is to happen this could be a big opportunity for Aston Martin and Williams late on in the day there but Lando Norris the tyres should already be a little bit fired up but he's still trying to save fuel uh, towards the end of this GP nine laps to go here from Spa and we are getting more and more crazy races in this McLaren career mode at the moment Sergio Perez leads the way off the restart there but he's got Carlos Sainz on an old set of tyres behind him ahead of both Mercs there Pierre, uh, sorry Charles Leclerc's teammate just ahead of Gasly um, so everything is about to kick off then late on in the day and Lando Norris like I said I think we've just got to tell him don't fight your teammate there. Oscar Piastri, we can afford to go all out attack mode uh, with our second car there. And now Lando Norris, uh, he's saved up pretty much all the fuel he possibly can. We might just have to do a little bit uh, right up. towards the end of this Grand Prix. But both drivers have got to push on. Oscar Piastri, show us what you're made of. This already all over the back of Pierre Gasly by the end of lap 36 here. We just need to be a bit careful with where we're using the battery, of course. But Lando Norris, uh, he looks like, yeah, he should be able to save enough fuel by the end of this GP, but could we get Oscar Piastri there? Potentially up battling with the Mercedes, of course. has already won one race this year. I'm sure he'd love to try and get the jump on Hamilton there. Of course, we have got Sykes as well uh, on those old hard compound tyres as well, so should be a big old advantage uh, late on in the GP, but might have to wait for the DRS to be re-enabled. There is Hamilton already well out of the range of the cars in front of him, and Lando Norris able to keep up with Oscar as well. 
DRS enabled though as we start lap 38. Are we now going to see Gasly try and have a look past Lewis Hamilton in this Grand Prix there? Will Pierre be able to make it by? It looks like Hamilton as well. Uh, sorry, Lando even has done quite a good job at getting away from the cars behind him there. But Gasly to the inside of Hamilton at the end of the Kemmel straight there. Lewis though is going to try and fight it back against Pierre. But the Alpha Tauri is through. Back into P5 then this afternoon. Oscar Piastri has got to try and get closer. Zhou Guan Yu's looped it round late on in the day, but honestly at the moment we've got bigger things to worry about. It's Hamilton now out of the range of Pierre Gasly as well. And so Lewis is really, really struggling here. And we might be able to try and capitalise on this as Oscar again is going to have to try and go on the attack mode up the Kemmel straight. Surely he's going to be able to try and get the run on Lan uh, Lewis Hamilton there. Surely. Surely. How is Hamilton? Back within the DRS range of the car in front of him. I've got no idea how he's managed that. But Lando Norris as well. He's got to be in prime position ready to go for this one. We've just saved a bit more with him. But we're going to have to try and save a tiny bit of fuel as well. As Alonso is dropping back on old hards. And Piastri's through. Piastri's done it. I don't know how he's done it. But he's passed Lewis Hamilton then on lap 40 of 44 of the Belgian Grand Prix. They actually got the run back in towards Stelmont. Similar style to Hamilton on Kimi Raikkonen back in 2008 there. Slightly less controversial standards uh, in this one. Can Lando Norris now move past him as well? And in the perfect world, we get that Alpha Tauri car. Well, Lando Norris then, lap 41 of 44, now trying to have a look past Lewis Hamilton as well in the Belgian Grand Prix. Their 6th and 7th would be a fine haul of points for us, and we, means we would still outscore Alpha Tauri yep. this weekend. There is Sonoda sat currently in P11, but Lando as well has got the fuel back where he needs it. There. Hamilton oh, just moves around slightly in the braking zone. Oscar's got to go for it, get Hamilton out of the DRS range. Out of the final corner. Lando Norris, though, still all over the back of Lewis Hamilton here. But Hamilton now definitely out of the range of the car in front of him. So we're going to have to try and go full deploy down in towards O'Rouge and Radigan here. Gasly, he's too quick. We can't do anything against the Alpha Tauri car. He's been fast all weekend long. But are we going to be able to get past Hamilton there? Big run as we head down in towards O'Rouge. Lando Norris side by side with his fellow Brit there. We've already seen overtakes being made by this McLaren duo already today. And Hamilton... Of course, McLaren's last Formula 1 world champion there, potentially going up against their next as Lando Norris round the outside of Hamilton down the end of the Kemmel straight there. He's going to have slightly better braking performance and Lando Norris is through. We've got both cars past Lewis Hamilton and this Grand Prix late on, but it is not over yet. We've still got two more laps to go. Lando Norris going to have to try and break free. Oh, final lap then here from Belgium and Hamilton has not given up on this just yet as George Russell apparently has ran wide there, brought himself back in towards the clutches of Pierre Gasly could really do with Gasly not finishing P4 here to be completely honest but Hamilton he might be down but he is not out of the Belgian Grand Prix just yet McLaren versus Mercedes it's not a battle we see very often on F1 manager but it's a battle that we're getting today is Lewis Hamilton has he saved up a little bit of battery for the final lap here of this Grand Prix. I mean, Lando Norris are just going to set him both on attack mode once again there just to try and see if we can break any distance away as will Lando Norris have the DRS off Oscar Piastri. It doesn't look like he will. There's got yellow flags out. Someone else has been nipped apparently somewhere around the circuit. But here comes Lewis Hamilton to the inside of Lando Norris once again. And has he made it through? He's going to try and squeeze Lando Norris out at the top of the hill there. But Lando Norris is not giving up on it just yet. But he has lost the place to Lewis Hamilton. We have to go full harvest, full save mode, ready for the final few corners of the Grand Prix there. We cannot afford to let Hamilton get away here lay on and this could have big championship ramifications of course uh, Pierre Gasly is going to bring home 10 points for Alpha Tauri we could walk away with 8 and 4 but I'd much rather come back with 8 and 6 as we head down the hill through Puon for the final time in this Grand Prix you can see Hamilton having to save the battery as well there full attack mode though now from Lando Norris between now and the checkered flag full deploy everything like that give it everything you got Lando Norris of course not the first time He's been in a late race battle with another car here. Up out on towards Blanchemont though. Will he get close enough to Lewis Hamilton? The gap is coming down. But will it come down by enough there? Flick him into overtake mode. Try and give him everything we can. Possibly at the top end there. Charles Leclerc will win the Belgian Grand Prix. They're ahead of Sergio Perez. Their sights will come through in for P3. It's going to be so, so tight for fuel on Lando Norris. But he's not quite able to get the jump on Lewis Hamilton out of the final corner. It's sixth place for Oscar Piastri and eighth for Lando Norris. We cannot be too disappointed with that. It was such a joy to watch McLaren's driver give it their all.
McLaren have shown some serious chops here. A good result for the team from Surrey. The whole team was absolutely on their game today, and the result proves that. And after this result, the team is fourth in the constructor standings. For the next round, Formula One won't be straying too far. We'll be heading to the dunes of Zandvoort and the lightning speed of the Dutch Grand Prix. Well, there we are then, the end of the Belgian Grand Prix and 17 places Charles Leclerc has gained this afternoon. An absolute strategy masterclass from Ferrari after the disaster that was the Hungarian GP last weekend. Perez comes home for P2 ahead of Sykes there. Russell in a quietly good P4 ahead of Gasly, a fantastic job done by him. Oscar Piastri up seven places. Hamilton separating our two McLaren cars there and Lando Norris P8 ahead of Bottas and Fernando Alonso there. Four cars unable to make it to the the flag Magnussen Schumacher of course came together I'm guessing Ocon and Verstappen uh, came to blows in similar circumstances as well but it does mean championship wise Carlos Sainz has now actually got over a 25 point lead in the drivers championship they're 27 ahead of his teammate and 29 ahead of Max Verstappen there but that battle is going to continue to rage on in towards the second half of the campaign Bottas still leading the way of the midfield runners there Gasly though gets the jump on Alonso and both Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris are closing in on the Alpine driver as well there you know we're just consistently getting both cars into the points which is really really good going at the moment constructors wise though Ferrari massively open up the gap again over Red Bull there we extend our lead over Alpine there to now 12 points in the championship and 15 over Alfa Romeo as well there Alfa Tauri of course not such a big threat at the moment but if Gasly is as strong as he is you know we never know what might happen later on in the season but thank you all so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed please do make sure you leave a like get yourself subscribed f1 manager is delivering some quality content at the moment you guys do not want to miss it when we return ready for the dutch grand prix none of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members so a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel you can join them by clicking the join button down below and yeah thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work